Hello, and thank you for tuning in to Neptune Knives. So today I'm going to talk about uh, methods of lubricating and also rust and corrosion that idea. And this is a response just to uh, someone who had asked me what is dry lubricating. Um, now, uh, okay. So anyway, so if you haven't seen the review on this, uh, please watch the review. You know. Uh, that one that says the most important video you'll ever watch, okay, on knives, uh, because this this is what I'm talking about. So basically, there's a couple things to note. First of all, okay, how does rust form exactly? Okay, uh, there's like three types of uh, categories, roughly, of stainless steels. You got I can't pronounce it very well, but austenitic, ferritic, and martensitic. All of the knives you see that are stainless, the ones that we use as, as knife users, uh, and they're martensitic because they're tougher. But above those three categories, they have the least uh, ability to resist uh, corrosion and rusting. Um, austenitic are the ones that you see have over 6% molybdenum and also have chromium, so they're the chrome moly mixes, similar to 154CM, used by a lot of custom knife makers. And those are what you see everywhere, kitchen color and everything, and those resist rust completely. Now, we were asked exactly, you know, rust can form, you know, pretty much, uh, you know, from many different things, you know, blood, uh, uh, liquids, you know, salt, uh, if you live in a salty area, uh, you know, your own sweat. What main thing is, there's two different ways rust can form. Rust can form by, uh, it well, it can form if it's on a uh, carbon steel blade. Uh, let me see if I can find a carbon steel blade here. Well, okay, regardless, any tool steel or carbon steel blade. When rust forms, because of its high density and has molybdenum, it forms evenly. So even if you saw like spots on the blade, the fact is, it's just on that surface. What happens on stainless steels? What makes them stainless is stainless have a, they have to have about 11 to 12 percent chromium to be considered stainless. And chromium, what happens when that alloy touches oxygen, it creates chromium oxide, a, a kind of artificial layer that seals in the, the the metal. But when there's something inhibiting that, such as, for example, to know stone wash finishes, bead blasts, scratch chips, anything like that inside blade, anything that creates more surface area. If you understand what I'm saying, if, if the area is polished smooth flat, then there's less chance for rust. If it has dips and dives, there's more actual surface area because of all those little cracks and ups and downs. And there's more chance for rust to form on those cracks. If something were to get stuck, you know, microscopically, you would see, okay, a little spot of rust because, you know, that, that chrome oxide couldn't form there because something was there prohibiting it, like maybe some kind of salt. Okay? The thing is, once you clean that off, it could pit, meaning uh, once it's in there, it's inside the steel. It starts to dig down into the steel, and it's not visible to the eye. So you can't just, like, scratch it off with some kind of, like, polishing cloth. You actually have to go in there. You know, if you want to use WD-40, you, you know, that's one way. You know, let it soak so it can pull it out. Or, you know, you could use a... Um, a uh, homemade method, maybe like lemon juice or something, to to get rid of that. That's the only way you're gonna know because a lot of people when they say that you know they're, the metal breaks, maybe the stainless screw breaks, maybe the blade breaks. Correct, maybe you were just prying, acting goofy, but you know it could have been the structural stability of it because there was pitting inside that you cannot see. Um, you know you might just see the surface and you you, know, you think that's fine, uh, but it's in there. Stainless steels, I mean that's if you Google it, it's like the leading reason why stainless steels break or fail, and it's pitting. It's, it's the idea of um, something, you know, getting trapped inside that chromium oxide layer and starting to eat down into the blade or the steel. So, now uh, things, methods, you know, like for example, aluminum is very corrosion resistant. When aluminum has an anodized finish such as this, it's corrosion resistant. Graphite can touch it. But when graphite touches pure aluminum or actual bare aluminum, it can corrode aluminum. And what it is, is the second type of corrosion is galvanic corrosion, uh, which is like galvanizing, like in pipes and stuff. And basically what happens is, most times when you have screws like, you know, on all these knives, you know, these are all three of striders, you know, uh, God love striders, right? These, uh, these little st steels are the same, because when you have two different steels, steels conduct electricity, they have a, you know, kind of like a, a charge to them. And what happens is, uh, this is not like purely scientific when I say that, but the point is, Similar steels, the current between them, when there's friction and the, you know there's any sort of uh, electricity from you know water has conducts electricity, it's it's same. But when you have two different types of steel, one that perhaps is more electrical than the other one, it starts to pool. Like there's a current that starts to form. There's a, there's one that's less than the other one. So it'll, there's a dominant one and it'll start pooling. Main thing, the main thing is graphite. When it to lubricate, graphite itself doesn't lubricate. Graphite uh, microscopically uh, traps things in the environment such as air, water, grease, whatever, in it. 
and then that makes it uh, lubricate and it makes it super lubricate I and mean, very very good the thing is uh, let's say for example you know you have two different steels such as an M4 steel you know which has molybdenum which I'll get into that and then you know aluminum or, or something else that you know a different type of steel there's a current and if they were touching meaning there was no phosphor bronze washer and you know if you read like phosphoric acid can be used to you remove rust so phosphor bronze washers you know that phosphor element has got to be part of that yeah correct me if I'm wrong but the point is uh, when you have two metals that you know are different and you put graphite in between them and then you have something in that graphite you know combine Ga graphite can promote galvanic corrosion, uh, galvanizing, meaning like loss of metal on one, the weaker metal. Um, you know, it's, U.S. Air Force uh, used to use it, but now they prohibit uh, graphite lubricating on their aircraft, you know, airplanes and stuff. But graphite lubricant, graphite lubricating is used on, on locks, uh, machinists, you know, knife makers use it on their machines, you know, locksmiths. Uh, you, there's many applications for it. And why use it for a knife is because, you know, heck, it, it's a good option, alternative. Uh, now, uh, so this here is an SMF. Nope, aluminum. But it's anodized. I'm gonna put some graphics. I don't want to go near. You know, I don't want to damage, of course, this. And I'm gonna clean it off once I'm done. Okay. So you hear this one? Okay, locked, right? See it. Like... Okay. Okay, you heard that, right? Graphite. It's also pencil lead. Pencil lead. Good quality graphite. To be my, my my recommendation. Put it right where the meets. Right around the blade thing. Okay. Work it in there. Now no. Uh, titanium has no electrical current. It's non-magnetic. That's why divers use titanium knives. You know, Strider's little fancy titanium all knives. Warren Thomas, great for divers because heck, you know, Navy SEALs, there's mine, won't go off. Okay? Watch. Easier, right? Watch this. Do it again, a little bit more. So, what kind of knives can you dry lubricate? Well, first of all, you gotta make sure. You hear that? How much easier that was? Not that same noise, right? Point made. Now, the thing is, okay, graphite can affect stainless steels because again, it, it can create a layer, affect that chromium oxide. The only stainless steels that aren't affected by are chrome moly mixes. That's why the preferred CPM 154 or 154 CM, uh, you know, uh, by custom knife makers, because you know molybdenum. If you research, uh, for example, they have a special molybdenum mix uh, that creates a, an, a super alloy that can withstand 1300 degrees Celsius, uh, and it's molten like salt, and, and it not it can not even be corroded. Uh, it was used you know, in the military uh, in their armor plating uh, during World War II. Uh, it's an option, a more affordable option to tungsten. So any T alloys, uh, what you know, I'll tell you about that on those three sister forge knives. But the point is, chrome moly mixes. Basically, all the all the cheap, cheap stainless steel you see everywhere, pretty much, austenitic ones like silverware, uh, to uh, the ferritic ones like 18 CR20. You know, uh, those though to have a low molybdenum. But then you have these. This is the only chrome moly in the Martin Stick family, and that's 154 cm, which has 4% molybdenum. According to Wikipedia, a knife has a, must have at least 2% molybdenum in order to resist that uh, a graphite uh, uh, promoting galvanic corrosion. What it is is uh, molybdenum, according to you know research, it uh, it keeps the metal, it bonds the metal together, like it keeps it from being pulled off. When, in that process of uh, electric uh, galvanic corrosion. So that's the, kind of the cool part about molybdenum. So ga basic graphite lubricant is a good option if you know, for me, it preserves your lock bar big time, big time. Don't ever have to break in the strider ever again. Got a knife that's jamming, you know, we're talking, hey, you know, you just don't, you know, you don't want to pack some grease. If you got a knife with molybdenum, it's great. What you gotta watch out for is knives with stainless steel liners. Unless they list what kind of stainless steel liner it is, or you can find out the answer and research and they make sure it has molybdenum, don't do it. Phosphor bronze washers, phosphor is very resistant to corrosion, etc. Don't gotta worry about that. Uh, the pivot itself is smooth. Now the pivots most likely are stainless steel, but the fact that the blade is constantly moving on it over and over, and most likely that you put grease in there, uh, along with the fact that uh, that area is not airtight, but definitely uh, smooth to perfection, uh, you know, and it's just moving constantly. If you were to risk putting uh, a graphite lubricant in the actual pivot area, I've done it, so far I haven't had a problem. Do I suggest it? I mainly graphite lube only the lock bar surface. I don't, you know, sometimes I've had to uh, do the, the washers. Note though, G10 is fine, you know, titanium is fine. It's just, we gotta look at, does graphite touch stainless steel? If it does, 
what kind of stainless steel be careful um, and the question also the blade stainless steel any carbon blades tool steels great these new striders with the m4 blades that come with aluminum awesome combination awesome steel m4 tool steel you know great manufacturing of this aluminum durable but goofy because you can't drive lubricate it you know so like i said is dry lubricate better well, uh, it won't cling anything. Nothing clings to it. You know, if you're in a, in a desert setting or some kind of you know outdoor setting, you know, and there is dust or dirt and things like that, that's why they use industrial settings because you know it it, does, it doesn't. There's no fluid, so uh, that's graphite lubricating. Now, some other options for lubricating are crystal fluorinated grease. Now, crystal fluorinated grease is great stuff. In my experience, it sticks. It makes it you know really smooth, not watery smooth, but really close to it, and it lasts. Now the thing is, it's gooey, it's gunky. You gotta open your knife up, put it directly in the pivot. So for some people who don't like to take part of their knives, you know, and for just that trouble of always having to take part of knives, uh, it's only if you are willing to take apart your knife. Is it worth it? Definitely, my favorite. Now, next comes up some other options, not as good. Zoom spout, not so, not really meant for knives, not so smooth. You know, you just can't open, you can't go from the back right here and just drop it in there, and it'll just seep in there. It's a little more thick than that. Uh, does it make it smooth? okay does it last okay but you know are there better options definitely definitely now any kind of remote control RC oils ball bearing oils ones that possibly have silicone or Teflon suck <laughs> suck those keep them away from your knife it's not worth it okay now um, blue lube bench moid I'm really starting to like this stuff blue lube is a lot like Chris Reeve grease uh, and machine oil um, it, it lasts so far decently uh, and it goes in and, and you can just drop it in and it, it'll seep into everything and so you got this you know this lube that can do that that's pretty good you know uh, because it means you don't have to keep taking part of your knife does it does it you know I'll be Chris Reeves of course not because I mean, this is just this is thick this is pasty it sticks um, now the next thing is machine oil now what I do with machine oils this is for sewing machines you know go to the fabric store buy machine oil you know, for the sewing machines. This stuff is extremely liquid. Uh, extremely, it's like more liquid than water. You, if you were to worry about any kind of corrosion forming in your screws, even though this is like screwed down, if you were to just drop a drop, it would seep all the way through to the other side. You would get into the pivot. I mean, it's ridiculous. This stuff makes things watery smooth. It depends on the lockup now. If you intend to use this, if the lockup is a frame lock, it will seep everywhere. Possibly when you put it on the, the washer, it will seep all the way down to the lock bar surface where the blade tang meets. And next thing you know, your lock bar slides extra far in and you'll get jammed because it's just so, uh, it's just so slippery, this machine oil. But it's great for screws. And this is what I use to, to put oil after I'm done, ren waxing everything. Uh, you know, I put a little dab of, uh, of uh, machine oil just to guarantee that the screws are coated. And a coating, of course, and that's the next thing. If you want to prevent rust, there's a, the best way is to coat it. Best way. I mean, you just add a layer of paint. You know, you could, you, could, you could try a, um, what's that called? A patina, make, giving it a patina, different methods. But the, the point is, a coat is the best. I mean, you, if you give me like a paramilitary and you're telling me, hey, I need to use this for tactical uses or something, I'm going to coat the stainless steel liners with paint. I mean, I'm going to go in there and paint the surface that's between the stainless steel liner and a G10, and no one ever sees it, and I never have to worry about rust. Um, you know, so long as nothing, you know, scratches that paint off, which nothing will. So that's why most real tactical knives, there should be coated screws, because at least gun coating, according to custom knife makers, uh, is self-lubricating and protects against rust. So, you know, you have that advantage with that, but nevertheless, I go in there and do that. Um, should you coat your blade with oils? Yeah, it's always good. You know, you give it a layer of oil. Note, Ren wax and certain oils contain petroleum, uh, gasoline, you know, things that can cause cancer. And if you tend to use the knife after coating it and cutting food with it, you, you could be, you know, ingesting stuff that could give you cancer. So you might want to consider mineral oil, something you just buy, you know, when you want, you know, mineral oil, people eat it to help them take shits. But the point is you can, you can buy mineral oil and coat it with that too. Um, you can use the oil from your nose, not the best, but you know, heck, if you have to, you have to. Oh. Rem oil, almost forgot. Rem oil, not that good, okay? You put it on, it dries too fast. It makes it kind of almost like a metal sliding on metal. You can feel it and hear it. Rem oil, uh, it seeps in. You know, it's, it's better for coating, in my opinion. I use it to coat things. It won't seep in as good as machine oil or blue lube. But, you know, it, it's somewhat like them. But machine oil is definitely the most, uh, you know, if you wanted it to get into something and not have to take it apart. Uh, Rem oil is, to me, not as good as... If I had to choose, blue lube, machine oil, and Florida and grease. By far, the three best ones. Now... I just want to reemphasize, okay? 
pitting, stainless steels uh, having corrosion is one of the biggest things that you have to watch out for. I mean, it happens. It's probably why your, st your screw broke, because the knife you got had some corrosion on that screw. So remember, the only way to really truly remove it is you're going to have to soak it in a solution that removes rust, such as WD-40 or uh, lemon juice for just a little bit to make sure that uh, that rust is pulled out of those little pits. And then, then coat it and, and, and then keep your fingers crossed. Okay, thanks again. Hope this was helpful.